Hi everyone, Anthony here. Um, I have a show coming up and I have to mount some large paintings on paper, which I, it's the worst fucking thing in the world. I hate doing it. Um, and I already did two last weekend and it's just like, I gotta get this last one done. I've been putting it off all week. And so I'm trying to trick myself into doing it by making a video showing how I do it. Um, because, um, I get asked all the time, I get DMs about it, and it's so hard to like communicate. I have a short way of being like, well, you think it's this, but it's actually this. Um, but it's actually so much more complicated and annoying. So um, I have a show coming up that's gonna have like a couple of these big things on paper in it. So I'm making a video so that if somebody asks, I can be like, well, I know it looks like it's just a piece of paper on top of a piece of fabric, but actually the painting is attached to another piece of paper and the fabric's attached on top of that. That's my short version. Um, but I'm like, if you want the details to see how, like it's actually the worst shit in the world and you never want to actually do it, um, and it sucks, um, and it's just so time consuming. Um, if you want to see that whole process, you can go to my Instagram and just look for the thumbnail where there's like, well, this really, you know, it's really poorly lit. You'll be able to tell, I'm kind of standing there by iron. So, um, here we go. So this is the painting. It's ink on paper. It's wrinkly and crinkly. You can't just put it up on the wall. It looks like caca. You need to mount it to make it look nice and smooth. The whole point of that is like the paper itself obviously looks better because you don't see the wrinkliness, but those wrinkles cast shadows. And in my brush and ink paintings, there's like the, you know, there are all these like subtle gradations of value, subtle lights and darks. Um, and those crinkles actually look like marks sometimes. And um, it just makes all the brush strokes kind of blurry. So when you, you mount your drawing, it becomes really crisp and clean. And you can actually see the details of all the different um, sort of distinct individual brush strokes. It's just more interesting um, to look at. So the first step is you want to like spread it out on the ground. Um, you can kind of mist it with some water and let it dry. That'll help, you know, relax the fibers a little bit. I think everybody knows that. Um, but once it's totally dry, you want to get another piece of paper that's going to be big enough to put this on it, but also have space for the borders. Um, so I made a really big piece of paper out of a smaller roll. Uh, I don't recommend you do this, but all I have right now is this Schwann paper. It's not super thick, um, but it's really, really strong. And you know, one side's really smooth, one side's a little rough, but clearly this is not wide enough, right? So I, um, we'll talk about it later, but I made a bigger piece of paper, basically adhering a couple of these um, together. So let's grab our big piece of paper that everything's gonna go on top of. All right, so I've got my big piece of paper. It does need to be nice. You just need it to be smooth and strong. Um, and like I said before, it needs to be big enough to uh, hold those border, those pieces of fabric on the borders. So there is kind of a general rule for like doing those measurements. Cause when you look at them, there's more fabric on the top than there's at the bottom. Right, we're kind of used to frames where it's kind of the same width all the way around. But for these really tall vertical things, especially that ends up looking kind of weird. So as a general rule, you want whatever this measurement is for the sides. For something this size, I usually do like one and a half inches. So if the side borders are one and a half inches, you want the bottom border to be basically twice this measurement. So if this is one and a half, the bottom border is gonna be three inches. And then the top border is gonna be double the bottom. It's very simple, right? So if these are one and a half, double that for the bottom, that's three. Double that for the top, that's six. So the top panel is gonna be a little bit bigger, but again, it kind of looks more normal when you're actually looking at it in person because that part of the painting is farther away from you, right? So the top kind of appears smaller than it actually is. So it just helps make it look good. Just a bazillion years old um, general rule that, that works and makes things easy. So I'm gonna double check and make sure 
that this is big enough. Oh yeah, this is like, I got two and a half inches um, on both sides. There's definitely three inches and six inches up there. Um, the other kind of key thing to kind of remember and hang on to for this whole process is that like, something I learned pretty early on is that it's way easier to leave yourself room to make things a little bigger than they need to be. And then you can go back and trim them down to like the perfect size. That's way, way easier than like measuring out all these perfect panels and placing them perfectly. It's like you wanna give yourself room for, for many of these steps. Give yourself room to kind of like make a slightly crummier version of it first and then you go back and then kind of slice it down to make it look perfect. Okay, so we have our big piece of paper. It fits our painting. It's gonna be able to fit our borders. Now what we have to do is we have to cut a piece of silicone backing paper, you know, just a, basically the same exact size as the painting. So I, I don't wanna do this. Huge pain in the ass, here we go. Okay, so a couple things about this silicone backing paper. So I get it from blueheronarts.com. Shout out to Henry Lee. I learned a lot of this from, from watching his um, kind of long real-time videos. But um, it's pretty great. So it's kind of like a wax paper. And then you kind of see the shininess, right? There's a super thin layer of silicone, heat-activated silicone on the other side. So you can basically, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this is the silicone backing paper. So again, we need to cut this to the same size as our painting. And again, my painting is, is the one I'm doing today is really, really big. So I'm gonna have to put on a couple pieces because this is not wide enough. So I'm gonna cut this into a couple pieces to completely cover the back of my painting. And I'm gonna be using a lot today, one of these quilting rulers, which fucking rule. Um, it allows you to make, you know, square measurements. Um, Cause we're making a bunch of rectangles basically um, in a lot of different ways today. We're just gonna need to make a bunch of rectangles. So this is really good at making rectangles and squares cause it's clear. Why am I holding up a clear thing so you can see it? It's clear, so you can see through it onto the paper below, and there's like all of these, you know, there's like tons of grids on it, so you can always kind of line it up with an edge that you know is, is straight, um, and use that to, again, like pretty quickly, pretty confidently make a bunch of right angles. I almost forgot, so to cut it, don't use scissors, it's not gonna work. Um, I'm using a, um, I forget what you call these, but you can get them at, in the craft, um, in the fabric section of craft stores, like a, um, a rotary cutter? Rotary cutter, I think that's what they're called. Um, it's like a pizza cutter, but like insanely sharp. If you just kind of like touch yourself with it, you will bleed. Um, so I'm using this, I'm gonna be using this most of the day, this rotary cutter, um, uh, you know, on a cutting board, obviously. Also, when you're using the silicone backing paper, like you want it to be, uh, like it can't be too warm. You know, so I'm out here in the like Florida room um, and I, I, I turn the AC way down um, because it'll start to stick to things. Not everything, but, um, and it won't get gooey, but it'll just, like it'll come off the backing paper. Like it's already doing that a little bit, but I just fixed it because I got it like that. Okay, so um, you can hear it kind of sticking a little, right? So you want to make sure it's cold. Like if you can feel yourself kind of sweating a little bit, it's probably too warm. Like turn the AC down, don't turn on a fan, right? Because there's going to be paper, so much paper today flying everywhere. Um, so it sucks, it's unfortunate, but yeah, it's really gotta be cold. Okay, so now I think I have enough backing paper to just go on the back of my painting. It can't be sticking out. It's gotta fit the back perfectly. It's fine if there's, if you don't fully cover it to the edges, that's fine, but you don't want the silicone to like peek out beyond the edges because then it's gonna, you know, stick to shit. 
Okay, so I've got my painting. We're gonna put it face down on, if you're wondering what this blue stuff is, it's denim, just from the fabric store, just a couple yards of denim. You want at least two layers. Um, so I just basically have one big piece folded in half. But when we're using the silicone, we're gonna be ironing it, because it's heat activated. So we're gonna be using an iron to adhere it um, to the, to the, to your stuff together. Um, and so when you are ironing, you wanna do it on, again, a couple layers of, of denim. So, okay, here's my silicone backing paper. I'm gonna put it silicone side down on the back of my painting. And this is also very annoying. All the papers are in rolls, right? So they want to curve in the, uh, you know, the exact opposite direction. You want them to curve in. It sucks. Um, but again, the more you do it, you know, the better you get. I don't, I mean, I'm still really annoyed every time I do it. It's not a relaxing thing for me, sadly, but, um, yeah, it's gonna wanna curve, it's really annoying. Again, having it be cool, having it be cold, um, helps with that a little bit, I think. If I actually cut another tiny piece, oh my god. Shit. Hold on, we'll see. So I think this should be good. I'm gonna have to trim off a tiny bit on that side, I think, whatever, it's fine. Um, oh wait, no, I can overlap it. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got our painting face down. We've got the silicone backing paper on the back with the silicone side down. And what I'm gonna do now is plug in my iron and we're gonna turn it up to like wool. So pretty high, basically almost as high as it can go. And you want it to be, you want it to be dry as well. Don't have the steam on. And this is just scrap paper that I'm writing measurements on as I go, in case you were wondering. We're gonna give this a minute to heat up. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the middle. And you know, you don't have to like push down really hard, just kind of iron kind of normal. Um, you kind of want to constantly keep it moving but we're just gonna iron this silicone onto the back of the paper. And again, normally, most of the time, it's just gonna be one big piece of silicone, but, you know, I have this big painting and I have this roll of silicone that isn't huge, so I have to, like, put these different pieces on there. But ideally, normally, it's just one big piece of silicone. Okay, here we go. Um, this is one of those things where when I first started doing it, it felt extremely awkward. I was like, I'm gonna like destroy this painting on accident by doing this. And it does look kind of shitty at first. Um, it'll look kind of wrinkly and gross. But again, the more you do it, the more kind of better you get at ironing, as weird as that sounds. But like, you know, like I didn't know things like if there are wrinkles, like what direction do you iron, right? Like if you have wrinkles going this way, do you iron this way or do you iron like kind of against them, you know? So I think most of the time you're supposed to kind of iron against them. So like, again, if you have like a bubble going like this, you want to smooth it out like that. And again, and you know, the, the larger the painting is, obviously just the more, more awkward and annoying it's gonna be. Like, you know, I have to scooch it down to, to fit my, my piece of denim. Be a lot of that happening. Um, but I forget what the kind of general rule of thumb is for knowing when it's done um, being ironed. I think there is a kind of basic calculation of like, you need to iron this many minutes for this many square feet. But I just do it until it feels like it's stuck. 
and you see I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of constantly moving. It's gonna be a lot of wrinkles. For now, that's fine. And now that I've kind of hit everywhere with heat for a couple seconds, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm starting to push a little harder at this point. Again, this is something like you just have to practice on crappy paintings where you don't really worry about fucking them up. Um, and you'll just, you just literally will start to get a feel for it. Like, like, you know, most things. So, it feels, you know, stuck everywhere. There's some bubbles, some air bubbles, that's okay. But I'm gonna flip it over just because it's a little easier to see the wrinkles on the painting this way, obviously. And now I'm gonna like, you know, kind of focus on those wrinkles. And again, I'm not pushing down hard. Got a lot of like shallow wrinkles like this. You kind of see this one maybe. So I'm going perpendicular to them to kind of smooth them out, kind of off to the edge, all the way off the edge of the painting. It's kind of like steaming clothes, like you gotta do it a little, probably slower than you think you do. And more times than you think you have to, than you think you should do. And if you've never done anything like this before, it might seem a little bit crazy. It's like, oh my god, it's paper. You know, uh, it's like so fragile or whatever. Um, the paper is really strong, actually. So, you know, it's paper. You can't, like, <laughs> make, like, you know, uh, a cabinet out of it or whatever. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's like those Charmin commercials. You kind of, like, do do kind of go like that. It's very, very strong. And this is not rice paper either. This is mulberry paper, which is a little bit even stronger and thicker, uh, slightly thicker, but it's way more absorbent. So, I mean, it's just easier for me to work on paper that's more absorbent. Rice paper is like, it's great because there's so much subtlety to it, but unless you're like really, really practiced and good and kind of can control how much moisture is in your brush, like at all times, um, unless you're really, really practiced, um, be because there's all this subtlety in the paper, you know, like it, it, any little kind of goof that you, that you make is gonna be like really apparent. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but the more absorbent paper, I don't know, it just, for what I like to do, ends up working out for me a little bit better. I think things look a little bit more, I don't know, like the edges of the marks are a little bit softer, which kind of plays into this kind of like muggy vibe that I'm easily going for. Okay, so I'm actually feeling pretty good about this top bit. The back looks like dog shit, right? It's like, oh my God, it's, it's so wrinkly. What have I done? But that's why you flip it over and iron on the front. And as I was saying before, you know, it's um, a lot stronger than you, than you think it is. Um, I'm not pushing down wicked hard, but you can, you can totally iron on the front. Um, with a dry, you know, with a dry iron, right? If, if, it's, if, it's mo if it becomes wet, that's when it becomes really susceptible to being like torn and stuff. So when it's dry though, you know, super chill. So we're gonna let this cool off. It only takes like two, three minutes, um, but we're gonna let this cool down and then I'm gonna peel off this, this backing paper. All right, so I ironed on that second panel. It's nice and cool. This one's very cool. Let's, let's peel it off. There's also a little trick to doing this as well. I uh, basically, I'm gonna, let's do it as if it's one big piece. I'm gonna start in one of the corners and just very, very slowly peel it off. Is this visible? Sick, okay. Um, and you can, so, and then it's like, okay, great. I can tell there's this like ridiculously thin layer of silicone that has stuck to my painting 
wonderful. So I've gotten like to the middle of the painting. At this point, I'm gonna go to the other corner and then do the same thing off that side. This basically helps prevent the painting from, from curling up too much. I don't know why. Great, yeah, so like if I were to, like if I had grabbed the corner and then just went all the way across like this, sometimes the painting like curls. So if you just do, you know, halfway here, then halfway here, you're able to pull down like all the way across like that instead of from a diagonal. So, and again, I'm not going too fast. Um, mostly to prevent, again, that, that curling from happening. Man, okay, I'm actually surprised. This is a lot smoother than the paintings usually are at this stage. Usually there's still some unfortunate like wrinkles and folds. Um, this one's actually not, not that bad. Another pro tip, have a box nearby, like an old cardboard box, because there's going to be so many little pieces of paper that are going to accumulate. Definitely throw them away as you do, like put it in a convenient spot so you can just throw them away as you do it. Otherwise it just becomes insane really fast. So, bam. Um, and here's the other piece I did before. If you have just one piece of silicone, obviously just keep going all the way down. You don't need to do the corner thing again. Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe that is better. The other reason I wanted to do the, the video, you know, is to be able to show people who ask or are like genuinely interested um, to get more excruciating detail. But also, and to motivate myself to actually do this thing that's just, I, you know, it's really hard to get started because I know there's just like a lot of work. But the other reason is uh, for myself so I can remember all these little things and just what works best because that's always changing. It's really easy to forget details. Sometimes, you know, I, I won't mount a, a drawing for, you know, months and I'll kind of be like, wait, what was the, you know, what was the easy way to do this again? So this is kind of a good example of like, huh, maybe it actually does come out smoother and better for these large ones. If you don't use one big piece of silicone, right? If you use these, these smaller patches. And literally one second after I say that, guess what? It's not. Okay, so I'm gonna finish peeling this off and then we'll, um, we'll get to the next step, which is now that we have this painting with this thin layer of silicone completely covering the back, we're then gonna iron the painting onto our larger piece of, piece of paper. All right, so if, if you do get this decent Schwann paper to mount your painting onto, uh, one side's gonna be smoother, one side's gonna be a little bit more textured. This is another one of those things where I honestly don't remember what side you're actually supposed to do it on, but I always do the more textured side. This is insane. I always do the more textured side because I don't know. Um, it seems like that makes sense. There's more little nooks and crannies for the um, silicone to stick to. The um, the mulberry paper and rice paper itself will have a side that's a little bit smoother and a little bit more rough and then, you know, you paint on the smooth side. So, you know, if you iron the silicone to the rough side of the painting, to me it makes sense to um, have the silicone stick to the rough side of the, um, the backing paper. So I'm gonna, oh God, get all the corners, wanna creep up. So I'm weighing those down with random fucking items. Okay. 
So now, this goes back to what I said in the very beginning where you don't need to measure out exactly, you know, you don't need to draw out a rectangle perfectly center of this and then place this painting in the middle of it. Just kind of eyeball it, make sure it's, you know, reasonably, the edges of this are reasonably edge of, uh, reasonably parallel with the edges of the paper. Make sure you have enough room for those border fabric panels, like we said before. But don't stress out at this, at this stage. This doesn't need to be perfectly centered onto this. Again, get it, get it close. Where's my fucking... Ugh. Okay, get it close. Make sure there's enough space. So I want my size to be one and a half inches. So I got plenty of space still. Maybe give a little bit more room on that opposite side. And you wanna leave room for mistakes. Okay, plenty of space. So now we got it more or less centered. There's enough room for our panels. Now we can start ironing. Just like before, it's dry. It's on almost as high as it can go. It's on wool. And man, not applying a ton of pressure. Kind of going from the center and working my way out. Kind of like the face of a clock, you know? Like the hour hand traveling across the face of a clock. There's gotta be a better way to like deal with this cord. I don't know. Drop that info in the chat if you have an idea for this freaking cord. See, I got kind of a wrinkle, but we'll be able to kind of go back and deal with those a little bit. I will say just yesterday, I saw some like super old Chinese landscape paintings. And I mean, part of it is just that they're, they're old, but I was like, damn, okay, like, you know, there's always gonna be, they're not ever gonna be like super perfect. Even these kind of masterpieces and like really good copies, like, there's gonna be little wrinkles. And, you know, that's okay. And it's one of those things, like, if you make art, you know this, but in the, in the moment, it's like little mistake is all that you can see, but you're a fucking normal person is like not even going to perceive it. Um, But yeah, it's always uh, annoying. And these little wrinkles and, and air pockets emerge, but just like before, you know, go uh, perpendicular to the wrinkle from the center all the way off the edge. I'm gonna have to move this in a minute because I don't have enough denim. I gotta get a bigger piece of denim for sure. This is stupid. I want to say this is the most annoying part. This is the worst part. Um, and it probably is measuring the piece of silicone paper to fit your painting and then ironing that onto the painting and then ironing the painting onto the backing paper. That's like the most annoying and stressful part because it's like, oh no, I might literally just destroy this on accident, you know? So I want to say, oh, what's the worst part, you know? And it probably is, but all the steps coming are just really bad. <laughs> They're not that much better. We're gonna start working with fabric too, which it's always annoying. It's, it's like, of course, you know, moments after you 
kind of figure out how to work with the paper and the silicone, it's like, hey, okay, now we're gonna move to this like completely different kind of material. Um, yeah. So, whatever, I have a bad attitude, but this is looking, you know, better than average. I think part of it is, there's just so much ink on it, you know? Um, yeah, truly, I mean, that's kind of a general rule, right? It's like, the, the more white that you have in your painting, the more unpainted paper you have in your painting, the, the harder it is to, to kind of, it's hard to get away with, like, having a lot of empty space, so those paintings with, with a lot of empty space that don't have ink on them, those are the, the hardest to, to mount. So, I mean, I think because there's just so much, much ink on this painting, um, that's making it a little bit easier and harder to see. You know, like, those imperfections are probably there, you know, but we're just not seeing them as much just because there's, there's so much, um, so many marks, so much stuff going on on the surface. So I'm gonna iron for a while, maybe like five more minutes. Probably should do it for more. Maybe I'll do it for like 10 more minutes, but I'm gonna stop filming. And then when we come back, this will have cooled. And we're gonna start to cut the panels for the frame, for the border. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so I have a piece of scrap silicone backing paper left over from the last large painting I mounted last week. Um, so we wanna make a piece of silicone backing paper the size of each of those rectangles that, that are gonna form our border. And the really long, skinny ones on the sides, that's always the most annoying to kind of like, you know, source the, um, the silicone and the fabric. So, cause it's again, a really long, skinny piece so I measured the painting and it's 55 inches tall. So we want to make a piece that is a little bit longer than that um, because these side panels are going to go on first. So they could be, like they don't need to be precise, they can be a little bit longer because the top and bottom panels are going to like go on top of them. So again, whenever we have the opportunity, we want to go like a little bit bigger than we have to so that we can trim it down to size later and make it look perfect. It's just so much easier and it looks better. So <laughs> I need two of those long skinny panels. We'll just say 57 inches long. And ultimately we want them to be one and a half inches wide, but we're going to make them a little bit bigger, right? So that we can trim them down here. So I'm gonna do, yeah, two inches by, by 57 inches for this size. And I'm gonna try to work with an edge that I already, oh, I can't. So normally you would like, okay, let me start from the bottom because I already have this straight line. But no, we can't do that. We actually have to have a little bit of a border of the silicone because we're gonna iron the silicone to the fabric. So you can't, like you need to have a line that you can cut on. Um, this, this will make more sense once we actually stick it to the fabric, but you can't use this edge that already exists. We're gonna have to make these, this, these long rectangles floating inside. We're gonna need an extra border of the silicone backing paper for it to work. So, so what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna make a four inch wide line here, four inch long line. And I'll just trace this so that I have, is this even visible? So I have this like angle. And here we go. I'm gonna trace this as long as I can get it. Let's just do it in increments of 20 to keep it easy. So we have this straight line. So now what is cool is I can use one of the, um, one of these grids and line it up with that line to create the line on the bottom so that they are parallel. Or we don't want them to converge. We want it to be a perfect rectangle. So I'm lining up one of these lines that's four inches. 
above this bottom edge because I want it to be four inches wide. And now I have this nice, like, you know, basically more or less pretty parallel, uh, very long uh, line. So now I'm just gonna keep doing that where I kind of line up my lines on my existing lines and just extending this far down. I think each of these are 20 inch chunks, right? So 20 inches, 20 inches, and I want 55. So okay, let me line up this line up here. Extend this one. Match it up on the line here. So if this is 40, Oh, no, I need 57, right? So um, 40, 50, dude, this is taking so long, right? I'm actually doing this pretty fast, if you can believe it, um, for what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just gonna line up this line here to make my nice, Super perfect edge. So now I've got this like more or less perfect rectangle that is a little bit longer than the sides of the painting. And I'm gonna be able to get, you know, two side, two two inch panels out of this. So now I'm gonna use this again and I'm just gonna go to the two inch mark, line it up on that bottom line to again have this central line that's nice and parallel with my other ones. Again, these rulers rule. It allows you to do these kinds of perfect geom ge geometrical, what? These uh, perfect geometric shapes, rectangles. Um, again, pretty quickly, pretty confidently. So now I've got a little bit of a border here um, because again, we need that to be able to cut it out of the fabric later. So I'm actually, I'm gonna draw a little border above here. I'm gonna do this pretty neat so that, you don't have to, but I'm doing this pretty neatly so that I can um, have a nice straight edge on this piece of long scrap paper I'll be able to use it for another large painting later. It'll save me a little bit of time and effort down the road. Wait, where the fuck? Oh, okay. Get a little bit of a border down here. Great. So let me kind of go, let's make some fabric panels out of this. Normally I'll like, cut all the panels at once, but because I have this long, weird piece, I'm not gonna be able to get the other panels. So let's just go all the way with the, the sides of the paintings first so we can see that whole process and so you can understand why you need that border. Okay, here's the fabric that I'm using. It's just straight up from Joanne. It's just like cotton. Uh, I've used a lot of weird stuff. Um, or weird fabrics. I mean, not just patterns, but I've tried several different materials and it's like almost all art things. <laughs> you just gotta like test it out, you know, on a small patch and see what happens. But um, the, the, my main advice is to get fabric that is not too thick. You know, like don't use plaid. Right, that sounds like a fun idea. I tried it and it was like, just, it was weird. Um, don't use fabric that's too thick and don't use fabric that's too stretchy. Um, because the stretchiness will make it look not even. When you iron it on, when you use the silicone and iron it on, you know, that little bit of pressure is gonna stretch it out. So it'll look a little like skewed. So the first step, with the actual fabric is to iron it, uh, just regular style. But we wanna get this nice and smooth. The other thing 
with the fabric is really take a look at it and figure out for yourself what is up and what is down. So like a lot of the times there are these weird all over patterns where basically any orientation kind of reads as right side up, but really, really take a good look at it because there'll be an orientation that is better. So this one is really tough. I'm actually, I thought I knew when I started ironing it, but now I'm kind of not so sure. I wonder what it looks like. Yeah, you can't really tell there, but you know, they're flowers, right? The stem's on the bottom, the flowers are on the top. Um, but it's like, I can't, it's, it's just hard to tell. I do think, I think it's right side up. Cause it's like stem, stem. I think it just flips. I, I think, I think this is the good one, the good side, but. But point being, sometimes it'll be really um, obvious. Um, but you wanna make sure you have enough fabric to be able to cut these long strips and then the side panels. I think intuitively for me, I don't want to waste the fabric. It's way, it's, it's not expensive, but it's like not nothing. Um, I don't want to waste the fabric. So my initial, my intuition would be, okay, we're going to do the long strips for the sides and then we'll do right underneath that, the big panel and the, and the smaller panel. But when you think about it, these are going to be on your painting. They're going to be this way. So the pattern will look like significantly different. So when we iron our border panels to the fabric, we wanna make sure that they all share a common orientation. They each have the same top and, and bottom. So, you know, if our side panels, this is the bottom, this is the top, for the top and bottom panels, we need to do that same thing, right? They need to have, again, the same relationship to um, the fabric's orientation, if that makes sense. So this is reasonably, What's the fucking word? Flat? It's reasonably ironed, um, unwrinkled. So we're gonna flip it over. Again, don't forget the orientation. So this is the top. So I gotta flip it like this so I don't forget. Okay. Now, we already measured our painting. We know how big our border panels need to be. We've drawn those out super perfectly on our sil on the back of our silicone backing paper. And we've left a little bit of a border on that. Here it is again. Right, this should be reasonably visible. We have all this kind of, we have this little bit of extra space. So we're gonna find So I'm going to do this right in the corner because you want your panels to be parallel with the pattern. You don't want to do it like this. Um, that might seem like a fun idea. I mean, that's something I've tried, but it just ends up being a little bit too chaotic. So I'm sure that's, you know, that could work, but 100% of the time when I've accidentally not had these be parallel with the pattern, I always notice that I'm like, oh, this would look better if they were parallel. So that's why I'm giving it close to the edge so that I can have this line be basically parallel with the edge of my um, pattern. So now we're gonna iron this on just like we did before. I'm gonna turn this down back to wool. And so, so much easier because it's smaller. But just as before, starting in the center and moving out, make sure this doesn't shift as you iron it. Because this isn't something I didn't mention before, but there's really no going back. If you um, start ironing and it's in the wrong place, it's like you can't redo it. You just, or you can't fix it. You need to just completely redo it. 
So it's really kind of an amazing material. And I've used it for a lot of, not a lot, but I mean, I've, I've figured out other uses for it. But yeah, I mean, uh, may, I mean <laughs> it's just, you can't, you can't undo it. And obviously this isn't the traditional way. So like the paintings I saw yesterday from like, you know, like the 1100s, they weren't using uh, electric irons and silicone paper. Um, basically you use a kind of like wallpaper paste and that's an even more insane process, which I can do. Um, and I think it looks better. And I'm reminded of it because I'm talking about the permanence of this. That mounting process actually can be uh, reversible, uh, which is like incredible, but um, it's so, so stressful. And you could really, really ruin your painting if you don't know what you're doing. And I just don't have a big enough smooth surface to do these large paintings like that. But I do prefer that, that wet mounting process. It's just for these large ones, I just, I cannot do it. And I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet, but there is this old saying that, you know, the painting is 20% and the mounting is 80%. Because like if you can mount a painting really well, you're basically on the same level as a good painter. Um, you know, I mean, there are people who that's their thing is their, that's their job. That's their like craft is, 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 is mounting paintings. And again, if you're good at doing that, you know, just respect you're, you're basically, you're on the same level as the actual painter, you know, if not more, you know, better. So we're gonna let this cool, as I said before, it only takes um, one or two minutes. And then once this is cooled, you'll see why we need this extra border, which I feel like I can't stop talking about. But say we cut an actual, an actual rectangle to the exact size that we need. Now imagine, you know, cutting right on this edge where the silicone meets the fabric, that's stupid. And it, it's, it just looks, you know, it's, it's stupid because it's hard and looks bad. Um, so if you just leave a little bit of an extra border, yeah, you're wasting a tiny amount of fabric, but you'll get these nice, super smooth, super crisp lines um, with, the, uh, with the rotary cutter. Oh my God, okay, I needed to take a break because I could feel, <laughs> I could feel the darkness approaching. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but so I made a coffee. You need to get, be as comfortable as possible doing this. Um, that's why I'm dressed like a fucking maniac right now. Um, but um, yeah, man, have a nice, have a nice beverage ready for when you start doing this. But um, no, no alcoholic beverages though. You can't be even a little bit puzzled off of a single can of light beer for this. You gotta be like, you gotta be all there. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I'm back. This is dry. Let me get rid of this. So, I have literally nowhere to put this. Um, once, this is not dry. Once this is cool, we're gonna use our rotary cutter to cut it out. So just right on that line. These rotary cutters are really fun. Like I said before, they are very sharp though. So don't cut like this. <laughs> because again, if it just touches your skin, especially if you have a new blade, it's gonna just pop right through your epidermis. Which, you know, that's fine, but you don't wanna get blood on the, um, Blood on the fabric, blood on the painting. It's not the 90s, right? We can't be using blood in paintings anymore. So you're smoothing it out, kind of keep things straight. You don't want the fabric to be bunched up, you know, when you cut through it. And try to get these as straight as possible. But do know that 
at the end, we'll be trimming everything. So it's okay if you make a little bit of a mistake, you don't have to completely start over. Okay, great, so we have our two side panels. I'm gonna scooch this down so I can remember that that's the top. And now we're just gonna cut down this line in the middle that we made. And before I forget, this just popped into my head, remember where the top is, where the bottom is. I'm actually gonna write on this right now. T for top. Sick, okay. So, and actually remember which one is the left and which one is the right too. Um, so this is the L, this is the R. And I'm just gonna put them over on the actual painting. Okay, great. Yeah, this pattern is kind of perfect for this painting. That's something that's really fun about this process is, is shopping for, for patterns because most of them are terrible for, you know, they just wouldn't work for what we're trying to do. But it's always so satisfying when, you know, you have the picture of the painting on your phone and you're looking at fabrics and you're like, oh my God, yeah, this one, this one actually would be perfect. So that's looking good. You don't need to see it yet. So now we're gonna do same process, just with different dimensions to create our top panel and our inner bottom panel. So we're gonna go back to the silicone paper and draw out our rectangles. Okay, we can do something similar to what we did with the side panels, where we you know, combine them into one rectangle and then kind of cut them in half. Because our top panel and our bottom panel, they're gonna be the same width, but the top one's gonna to be a little taller, the bottom one's gonna be a little bit shorter. Um, but we wanna leave that little bit of a border, just like we did with our side panels. So I did the measurements before, you know, if our sides are ultimately gonna be one and a half inches, our bottom one's gonna have to be three inches, and our top one's gonna have to be six. You double it and then double it again. So the width, the width now of our painting is longer because we have those two side panels, right? So. We want to cut the width to be, um, we want to factor that in, in the, that extra length when we, when we create these. So my actual painting, the width is 31 inches. Um, for these top and bottom panels, we want those to be actually 35 inches. Because we have these, these two inch sides that we added. So we're gonna do that same process, you know, to create a nice even square situation. Breathe when you're cutting. Okay. Always makes me so nervous when I hear it sticking like that, but I've never really had a major disaster where the silicone all just like sloughs off or whatever. So we're gonna go back to our fabric, making sure that you know it's oriented the same way as it was when we did our side panels. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, again. It's so much more complicated when it's large. Now I gotta do something silly like this. And just as before, I'm trying to do it close to the edge so that it's the panels themselves are parallel with the edges of the fabric so that the pattern doesn't look like it's kind of like 
drifting in a diagonal direction, which on paper sounds cool, but yeah, looking at it, it looks like dog shit. So, here we go. All right, we'll let that cool and then we'll cut it out. So same deal as before, I'm just gonna cut out this overall rectangle and then I'm gonna slice it uh, where they connect. I've also marked uh, where the top is. Because for this pattern especially, it's so hard to tell. I was looking at the side panels of the border and I'm looking at them in the con you know, on the actual painting and I think I might have to flip everything upside down. <laughs> Breathe, move your body if you can't reach, Jesus Christ. Okay. <sighs> Again, this is annoying, but I'm telling you, you gotta like clean up as you go or it's just gonna get good, become a nightmare. <sighs> Man, yeah, breathing really does help, okay. <clears throat> so this is the bottom panel. This is the top panel. So I'm gonna grab the painting and prop it up here and we're gonna see if we wanna flip the pattern upside down or not. I think I'm probably gonna wanna flip it upside down. Let's see. Yeah, okay, crazy. It actually does look better upside down. So I flipped everything upside down. Um, the flowers look a little bit more normal to me like that. So I lined it all up. Everything is going to work, right? It's uneven. Um, I've got my side panels down first and my top and bottom ones, you know, overlapping these side ones. It looks like it's all going to be good. So what we need to do now is with our quilting ruler, you want to try and make a squared rectangle, um, basically cropping our painting just a tiny bit because these edges are like really um, irregular. I like they're really kind of like wobbly. You can't use it as a reference. Um, so we want to create a perfect rectangle that basically crops out those edges so that we have something to align these two. Sometimes I'll be like, listen, bro, you're whatever. You're an artiste extraordinaire. You've done this several times. You can just kind of like look at it and make adjustments. You can't. It's too fucking long. Your perspective is too skewed. The, you know, it just doesn't work. Um, you, you have to draw that rectangle. I don't know if there's a better way of doing that, but um, I will just straight up draw with pencil on top of the painting because we're permanently covering it with this stuff anyways. You'll never even be able to get at that part of the painting ever again anyway. So um, best way for me for making it everything square and perfect is, is just drawing that perfect rectangle um, on the actual painting. So I'm gonna discard these, or you know, put them over here, um, making sure that I maintain the same orientation, right? The left one's on the left, the right one's on the right. These are easier to tell apart, so no worries. Awesome even, okay. That looks cool. So now uh, I'm gonna, you know, sharpen my pencil again, just so I can get a nice, easy to control line. So I'm gonna start on the side that's already pretty straight, and I'm using my quilting ruler to line up with this kind of more or less straight edge as my starting point. Did I mention that this is a lot of work and it sucks? Um, wait, no, this will work. Okay. Yeah, man, the bigger they are, the more difficult it is to keep everything straight in that. Oh my God. There you go. It's like it never happened. Great. So using our quilting ruler, we can line up one of the lines going this way with that line we just drew so that we have 
nice right angle. I'm trying to chop off as little of the painting as possible. That is one thing about the mulberry paper. It has all these advantages for me personally, how I like to paint. But one of the disadvantages is when you're mounting it, this irregular edge does make it hard to get a final painting where that border looks right and not, not skewed. You know what, I gotta... It's too long. So this is, this is, this is something that, well, okay. I'm really glad I'm doing this because now this is something I'm just figuring out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, oh yeah, okay, this is smart, shit. What have I never done this before? I've always had, whatever. Anyway, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this so that it overlaps my, this perfect grid on the green cutting board thing. And then, scooch this so that it matches up with the edge. Yes. Yes. I'm in such a fucking sicko. Um, oh my god. Okay, this is, this should work. I believe I can fly. Hell yeah. So now I can just scooch this down. So it's just too long. You can't just line up part of this yardstick. You can't just line it up and be like, okay, yep, yeah, that all matches. Like, I can scooch this so much and it still looks like it basically is matching. So it's, you know, that line's gonna be skewed because it's so freaking long. But this process of like, what I just did, I think ultimately will result in a more perfect straighter situation. It's, 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 uh, <laughs> you know, not super easy to kind of make happen. You are scooching the painting around, um, but you can get creative with what lines line up with what, so you don't have to scooch the painting around so much. But it's interesting, you think of using a ruler as being this very neutral, objective thing, but is a little bit of creativity happening with how I'm kind of causing these things to align in a way that is sort of easy to, to work with. Wow, okay, cool. <sighs> Neat. Now we're gonna do the small side. Uh, let's do it. Man, when I talk about it being a pain in the ass, right? This is the kind of, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. So we have this nice, perfect, you know, 45 degree situation, perfect corner over there. Um, now we're using this line. I'm lining up my ruler with that line I drew. It's really just the tiniest amount I'm shaving off down here. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm not even gonna sort of finish this one. I'm gonna do the same process on this other long side that I did over here, and then use that line to square off this corner. So we're gonna scooch all of this shit again. And I'm really just, you know, I just don't wanna cut off too much. Sometimes I do because it doesn't look good. But in this instance, it's like, Seems fine, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna cut off more than I need. So squaring it up with the, the mat and moving the painting so that it hits that edge of the, the ruler. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. So stoked I kind of figured this out today. And now I should be able to line up the grid on the ruler with this line I just drew and then just scooch it over to that bottom line. Hell yeah, dude. <sighs> wow. For what? For what? I don't know. Okay, so... It's pretty smooth sailing from here on out, actually. 
We don't need to cut anything for the very end, so I'm gonna move this back down here. And we'll turn this right side up again, just so we don't get a headache. And... My brain just short-circuited. So, so we wanna use this brown ribbon uh, on the top and the bottom. It's just something that makes it look a little more neat. Um, and it, I think it makes things look more, um, look more straight. I need to find the ribbon. I think it's over here. Bam. Yeah, also got this from blueheronarts.com. <clears throat> it's uh, this nice brown ribbon that already has a uh, super thin layer of silicone on the back. So let me get this denim back up here. Okay, cool, easy, who cares? It's not quite long enough the other direction. All right, so now that we have, ooh, now that we have uh, our frame kind of drawn in, you know, we don't have to worry so much. We can just kind of line it up with this. We don't have to worry about looking and checking. We can just focus on this, you know, how everything, how it looks with everything else. We can just focus on this one line. It's all we gotta worry about. And this doesn't need to be cut precisely because it's eventually the edges that are sticking out, those are gonna get overlapped by our border. I'm gonna line it up, spread it out. God, man, alive. I'm gonna actually weigh this down because the sides are curling up and making it hard to keep straight. See, when you press down, it doesn't line up anymore. So, just getting the angle of this to match. Surprisingly, always challenging. Okay, so I'm just, I got the center on there pretty well. So I'm just gonna touch it to get that little bit locked in place. And now I can kind of hold this taut as I scooch down so that it just overlaps that graphite line that we made. Man, I gotta get one of those little tiny irons. Like a, you know, a little travel iron. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Getting that one anchor point. This really makes, you know, super helpful. You know, starting from the middle and going out versus going left to right or, you know, right to left. Hell yes. Okay. And I'm not doing this on the sides. Um, I'm just doing the top and the bottom. It's just... Tradition. I don't know, there's all different ways of mounting, but that's just kind of the most common basic. Um, it's, it's really nice little accent though, which again, helps it look more straight and helps make the subsequent fabric parts go on a little straighter, I think. Again, this might look kind of psycho, having it flop around or whatever, but again, it's, it's very strong. Right, and now it's two pieces of paper that are like permanently bonded, so it's even stronger. And we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Man, so all of this stuff is really easy. I mean, you're just drawing rectangles and ironing, but you know, it's just really hard for it to it's really easy for, for it to kind of just look a little bit off, you know? So all of these things are just kind of all in the service of making it look as good and as straight as possible. So, okay, I'm feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. We're gonna do these long fabric sides now in a minute. Just gonna let this cool. And I'm gonna peel, peel this the backing paper off of the, um, the fabric. This is probably the most enjoyable, I almost said fun, but it's the least objectionable part of this whole process is peeling the backing paper off of the fabric. Oh my God, it's like, it's, it's, I'm just now realizing it's just like peeling that waxy paper off the backs of a Band-Aid. 
right? But imagine doing like a band-aid that's fucking five feet long. Ah, oh, it's so satisfying. I don't know if you can hear it. Just, oh, just a slight little vibration. So, so good. Remember the orientation. Don't forget where the top is, where the bottom is. And I'm just gonna line this up with that pencil line that I made before. And we're gonna iron this on just like we did that ribbon. We're gonna kind of anchor it in the middle and then I'll work our way to the edges. So we do the same thing on the other side. Oh my God, it feels so weird. I think we're good. Yeah, you know, another reason why these little brown strips are helpful is like, it, you know, it's way easier. It's like kind of um, practice and it's just easier to match up with that straight line with this. And now you can just kind of, I can just plop these top and bottom panels on and just, you know, kind of eyeball it. Um, you know, like, it'll, you know, it is just a lot easier to make the tops and bottoms straight because the sides are so hard. Okay, so let's do the bottom one first because it's smaller and that'll be like a little easier. And yeah, I made so many of these with the wooden square dowel at the top and the bigger round dowel at the bottom. Um, so that is literally a hanging scroll. But I don't know, people don't even know people don't really know any shit about um, Chinese art. So they, I don't know, they kind of feel like they take that the wrong way. Um, it's, it's primarily just a functional aspect of the frame. Um, that wooden dowel at the bottom, it allows the, you know, obviously it's heavy. So it pulls the painting down and makes it straight and it makes it not wobble around um, uh, due to airflow. And it also allows you to roll it up. <laughs> oh, and by the way, so then the dowel at the top, you screw in a couple screws you put some string through there and you have like a little piece of string basically so you can just hang it on a nail. Super easy, right? Um, and then when you wanna change them out, put up a new painting, you use the dowel, you just roll it up and it's like protected. You know, that piece of wood keeps it so that you can't squish it or crush it or crease it. Um, so you can ship, you know, like a ton of six foot tall paintings just like in a little box. Um, or store them, right? So that you can kind of switch them out throughout the year. But I don't know, I'm white. People, I feel like people, I don't know, they say it the wrong way, they don't like it. So whatever, so I'm just doing, I've just been doing just um, these borders without using the, the hangy stuff. And then just using pins to uh, put them in the wall. Which is fine because that's a whole bunch of extra work to the wood, but Anyway. And you know, usually working from the center out so you can kind of press out any wrinkles or air bubbles that are still there in between the paper and the silicone and the backing paper. It's actually really easy to forget to do that. Especially when you're, you know, at this point where you're getting so close to being done, 
I'll probably do another round of this once it's all completely trimmed and finished. All right, so I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna do the same thing for the top. <sighs> Fuck, I hate this. I hate it. Balls. Okay, so all the panels are on now. I'm gonna do one last, just kind of iron all over it sesh. Uh, just to try to make it as flat as possible. You can see it's still a little bit kind of wavy. It's not that bad, but I want to try and iron, you know, from the center out, kind of all directions for like, I don't know, what's just the worst amount of time you could think of? It's going to be that. It's going to be like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm just ironing. This table is hot as fuck. Oh my God. Okay. So, that's the second to last step. I'm gonna do one more ironing session. <sighs> All right, we, we did it, Joe. I'm uh, feeling pretty good about how this is gonna look once it's trimmed. I'm, honestly, I'm shocked. Um, I really thought this was gonna be more problematic than it was. But uh, all we need to do now, <laughs> merely, uh, is uh, create a new border that we wanna cut out. This is gonna get in the way, I just realized. So this is actually the easiest rectangle, I think, out of the whole day, because we already worked so hard to have these nice, squared corners and straight edges that we can use that as a guide to um, create, you know, create our, our outer border, which will then all slice off. So I want the sides to be one and a half inches. So just use my amazing quilt tur ruler I just dyed it for a second and just line it up for one and a half and I gotta really scribble so I can see because this fabric is very dark <laughs> all right, all we have to do now is use the rotary cutter. I'm gonna be sick. This is making me feel fucking sick. I'm gonna, um, all we gotta do is, yeah, put the mat down and trace, tra I'm like exhausted. Trace the line with the other uh, rotary cutter. Voila, that's it. I don't feel good. Let's hang this up and see, uh, see what it looks like. All right, it's hung too high on the wall, but I'm actually very happy with how it came out. Nothing immediately, I'm kind of looking in the camera because you can kind of see distortions a little better sometimes, but I don't really see anything too super off about it. Listen. It's a lot of fucking work. If I really, it's maybe literally my least favorite thing to do. Um, but the paintings, like, you just gotta do it. You know, they look, do they look, I don't know, 20% better, 30% better? I don't know, but they definitely look better. Um, it's not so much the actual pattern itself as it is just the process of adhering the painting to another piece of paper to make it flat so that you can just see the actual painting better, right? The wrinkles end up looking like brush strokes, which I hate, which everybody hates. Um, so, you know, is it worth doing? I guess, 
Um, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, you know, not even necessarily if you want to try and do it yourself, but just so you can sort of understand maybe why, if you're also doing paintings on paper, why they don't look um, as, you know, as crisp and clean as you would want them to, you know? So consider mounting. Uh, again, shouts out to Henry Lee. He posted a ton of um, like long form real time videos on how to do this. So it really took me a while to kind of absorb all that information. Um, and uh, that's where I get a lot of supplies is from him at uh, blueheronarts.com as well as um, OAS, both out of California, um, orientalartsupply.com, I think is what it is, or OAS family, something like that. But uh, yeah.